let's go over remote desktop without any agent, without any software install, without anything. Uh, this is commonly done by most people in data centers or servers. Uh, they all have what's called in-band remote access. Uh, this can come from what's called ILO or lights out in HP servers. Dell servers have uh, iDRAC and it's a sec separate interface that you plug into. And then the last way that really is very common is what's called Intel uh, V Pro or AMT. It goes by a lot of different acronyms in the Intel community. Management engine is kind of like its back end. Uh, this is how you could remote into an, an Intel system, which is kind of cool, but depends on which Intel system. Not all Intel systems have this capability, uh, but I just so happen to have a server that does. So uh, let's go ahead and showcase this because most people are really curious on how this remote access works. A lot of people consider it extreme con security concern, which it is. There's a lot of security holes in the Intel management engine and the Intel uh, uh in band access, it's it's a little scary to be honest with you. However, there are ways to update and secure it. And you should be aware that uh, it, your system has this. If it does have this capability, it's something you should be updating, especially when it comes to the firmware and those types of things. Because I'm gonna show you how you can access your Intel system uh, once this has been actually enabled. This video is brought to you by CDN77, the content delivery network used by space agencies and CentOS. I also am using this on ChrisTitus.com to speed up my website. So if you're interested in this, click the link in the description. So before I jump into this, I just wanna kinda go into this system back here. You see this nice little Star Trek system? Well, we're gonna remote into it real fast and I'm gonna show you a couple things before we jump onto the desktop and really dive in. Uh, because, well, you need to kind of see it externally, what it looks like when you're staring at the monitor and then someone jumps on. Because your screen will do some funky stuff. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go ahead and launch a, a tool that wasn't actually sanctioned by Intel, but it's so much better than anything Intel has. This is a, a lot better to remotely administer and also remote into your system without paying an expensive real VNC Pro license. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect and we'll go ahead and do remote desktop. Now be watching this screen back here. Um, it will pop in and you're gonna see it do some funny things. So you see that little red border right here? That's telling that you have someone's remotely connected. And then there's actually a little icon right in the top right here. If you're looking um, right about right here, you'll see this little system so it does a lot of things to warn you it's been remotely accessed which is good uh, but i wanted to go ahead and kind of showcase this now let's just uh reboot this because there's some really cool stuff i'm gonna just go ahead and say um let's reboot or we'll power cycle and as you see it's as if i came up and hit the reset button on the system that's how powerful this is and uh that's kind of amazing. So uh, I wanted to just go ahead and showcase this functionality because, well, it, it's kind of cool. But at the same time, you saw that was a hard power cycle. You, it actually said, hey, Windows didn't shut down properly. So uh, kind of cool. But let's go ahead and jump on the desktop and showcase this tool. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into this. Now, I've already set up Intel uh, Remote Management or AMT. You'll see this in the actual BIOS settings when you reboot your machine. It'll actually have a little blurb. You do the hotkey for it and then just go ahead and set a password and say you can do KVM without user consent. Uh, this goes ahead and kind of sets it all up so you can utilize tools on your desktop. These tools... I'm using Mesh Commander. This is an actual open source project. It's not actually made by Intel, but it's way better than all the Intel tools. Intel would have you do, uh, their method is use, download this giant SDK, and, and the SDK just sucks, to be honest with you. And then it also wants you to use like this pro version of Real VNC Viewer. Uh, it's called Real VNC Viewer Plus. This is actually, I think, a monthly subscription or some crap. And uh, don't ever pay for VNC. That's, that's, just crazy sauce. Uh, don't ever do that. So 
instead of downloading all these other tools, a huge SDK, and then paying for some uh, piece of software you don't even need, just go here, meshcommander.com, open source, saves the day again. Uh, this guy created this tool. We download Mesh Commander. We launch it, uh, and you get this screen right here. So I already added my my machine back here, and we're going to go ahead and uh, log into it. So you'll see server 2008. We're going to go ahead and hit connect. And adding a machine is just literally typing in the username and password you set up during the BIOS prompts for it. And you're presented with all the cool stuff. So uh, using the Intel tools, you have two different versions. One's on the web page, and then you have uh, the remote access and the KVM. And it's just kind of like spread out everywhere. And then there's also a desktop app. So there's three different spots on the Intel uh, SDK, which I'm not going to mention anymore after this. Just know it sucks. Intel's way of doing it was just horrible uh luckily this guy took all three of these methods uh the v viewer the web page and then also intel's standalone app and combine them all into mesh commander so we can do a lot of really cool stuff um there's serial over lan uh you can actually look at your hardware information see what it all is going on with like memory and and uh, just the complete readout of your motherboard BIOS and all kinds of really cool stuff to see what's going on. You can see your event log. When was it last rebooted? Uh, last firmware upgrades, um, audit log, network settings, uh, all kinds of just really, really cool stuff in this guy. So take a look at this tool. Um, definitely, you'll see that it says the computer's firmware is updated. Please click here. This is a good way to update your firmware. It even tells you, hey, you're using out-of-date firmware. You're potentially exposed to security risks. This is very important. Obviously, if this machine was on business, I would update this firmware immediately uh, when it comes to remote access, especially in-band access, because you can really have some really damaging stuff happening at this high-level access. Um, so anyways, we got all these different ways. Uh, you can do multiple user accounts, as you see. I set up two in here, um, different event subscriptions and wake alarms. I mean, just a whole array of stuff. But the big thing is remote desktop. Let's go ahead and hit connect. Oh, there's that nice little Star Wars theme. And you'll see this is actually a server 2008 system that's on this bottom PC Surprise! <laughs> it's a really old screensaver too from uh, 2000. So if you want the Star Trek one, I'll put the little link in the description and also right here on the page. Um, but anyways, so from here, we can do a whole bunch of stuff, which is just really, really neat. Um, apparently I need to activate Windows, but you know, I'll do that eventually. And uh from here, we can actually explore and remotely control this. And you'll see in the power options, you can do a power up, a power down, a reset, all kinds of stuff. So, I mean, it's really, really neat. So let me just showcase this real fast. We're going to just do a cancel and we're going to go ahead and turn this guy off. Now, it looks like it wants to install some updates. So let's see how fast it does these updates and shuts down. All right, I went ahead and disconnected. We're gonna go ahead and reconnect now. It shows a red light here. We'll see if it can connect. There we go. And we'll connect. And there it is. It's booting up, configuring Windows, and off we go. So this is a, a basic setup. I just wanted to do a broad overview today. Uh, I'm not going to finish waiting for Windows updates. We'll be here forever and this video will be 30 minutes long of me standing here. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and, and go ahead and shut this down. So that was an in-band management access kind of thing. I wanted to showcase this because it's super powerful. And if your system has this capability, it's kind of neat to set up if you ever need to remotely access it, especially if you have an issue, like let's say it locks up or something like that. This in-band management access basically is unaffected by this unless it literally has a hardware failure and it's unable to actually power on, uh, it's gonna be able to be accessed through this in-band management. This is extremely important when doing updates and all kinds of stuff. It's how people in like data centers and are managing servers 
aren't constantly running back and forth between the data center and uh, all those other places where these servers are stored because they have this nice in-band access. It's super important. Anytime you buy a server, typically you'd add this, like the HP lights out and the iDRAC from Dell are quite nice. I like it a lot better than obviously the Intel counterpart, but at the same time, uh, it is fine. It's it it works, but at the same time, you got to be very wary about a lot of its security concerns, where uh, the Dell and HP aren't nearly as bad. But with all that said, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. What do you think of in-band access? Does it just scare the crap out of you? Or do you think it's just an awesome tool that we should all be using? Uh, personally, I don't typically set it up on residential machines, only business machines, but it's still kind of neat. And I thought I'd show you that today. But a big shout out to all the people that support this channel. Without your support, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next one.